Good evening. This is the BSB TV 11 News for Tuesday, April 29th. I'm Peter Cattell. Our top story. A police officer saw his life flash before his eyes this afternoon after he collided at high impact with a wall near the Crow Lane roundabout. BSB's Julia Smatch was on the scene and has the details. A police officer could be seen lying in the road and not moving at around 2 p.m. this afternoon. Witnesses told VSB News that the officer had been traveling at a high speed along East Broadway towards Trimmingham Hill. When the officer went to go around the roundabout, the scrambler he was riding slid out from under him and smashed into the wall near the sidewalk. The police officer's body followed the bike and also smashed into the wall. Witnesses who were clearly shaken up told VSB News that the man hit the wall with such force that they thought he had been killed upon impact. However, thankfully the officer's injuries are not life-threatening. The Bermuda Fire Service along with the Bermuda Police were the first to arrive on the scene and when VSB News arrived there was no ambulance to be seen and one finally arrived about 20 minutes after the crash. Sources also told VSB News that the officer was on his way to a high-priority incident in the Southampton area. Police media spokesperson Dwayne Keynes made this official statement. At 2.20 this afternoon, police responded to report of a road traffic collision that took place at the junction of East Broadway and Berry Hill Road. It appears that an armed response motorcycle officer was traveling in a westerly direction to what we consider a critical incident when he lost control of the cycle, hit the onside curve. This resulted in the officer being taken to King Edward Memorial Hospital for injuries to his uh, person. We do not believe these injuries to be life-threatening. Now, police are interested in talking to anyone who has seen the collision to contact police on 295-0011. We also would like to thank the members of the public that actually assisted the officers. Some actually stopped and was at the officer's side until such time as the emergency personnel could be on scene. I'm Julia Smat reporting for VSB News. It was announced today that government will be shutting down three sub-post offices the St. David's Post Office, Harrington Sound Post Office, and Somerset Bridge Post Office. They will be shut down as of November 1st in an effort to make the Bermuda Post Office more cost-effective and sustainable. Acting Premier Michael Dunkley spoke about this development and how it will affect jobs. And let me stress, in closing, these three sites, no jobs will be lost. While some staff will be transferred to other areas within the Bermuda Post Office into vacant posts, I wish to assure residents that home delivery of mail in these areas will continue. And in keeping with the spirit of collective bargaining agreement, this morning a team for the ministry has already met with the representatives of the Bermuda Industrial Union, the Bermuda Public Service Union, and the effective staff to advise them of these changes. The immediate savings resulting from these closures will be about $75,000. However, as part of this closure plan, the government is considering options including the sale, lease, or alternative use of these sites, each of which could provide further savings or indeed additional revenue. Additionally, the Bermuda Post Office will communicate directly with the affected residents regarding their post, box post boxes and the at-home delivery and every effort will be taken to make a seamless transition to different mail delivery and collection. I think it might be useful for me to provide you with an example of the unsustainable nature of the current way we do business within the Bermuda Post Office. The St. David's Post Office has 683 post boxes and at the present time only 208 of those are rented. As the Sage Commission observed, it is clear that the post office's current business model is no longer sustainable. When asked what will be done with the buildings that are currently the three post offices scheduled to close, Acting Premier Dunkley had this to say. Uh, at this point, um, we have not uh, decided on any final uh, decision on what will take place with the three locations. Obviously, I think as um, everyone is well aware, the three locations um, in St. David's, Harrington Sound, and also up, up by uh, Somerset Bridge are very nice spots. 
Um, so there's a lot of potential. There's a potential for sale, there's a potential for lease or whatever. I personally believe that the Somerset Bridge location, with steeped in history with the smallest straw bridge in the world, would make a wonderful cafe and uh, um, community center uh, in that area. It would attract tourists, it would help our tourism product. So I think this is an exciting venture. Carter chairman, Dr. Joseph Francioni, a noted local orthopedic surgeon, delivered a hard-hitting speech today to Hamilton Rotarians about the toll that alcohol-fueled road accidents are having here and how other countries tackle the problem. We have a number of laws, I think I pointed out a few, uh, that are ineffective. They are uh, not fully implemented and certainly not enforced. So we have to work on implementation and enforcement, enforcement of the laws that we have at present, at present before introducing new laws. Uh, curbside um, solutions to the police uh, are pretty average all over the world except here. Yeah. I think that's a no-brainer. I think that our legislators have to consider changing uh, our laws to allow police uh, to do roadside breath testing. And uh, certainly we are encouraging sobriety uh, uh, um, checkpoints, uh, non-selective sobriety checkpoints. What do other countries do that we don't do, which is an absolute, you say no-brainer, but uh, could be done tomorrow? Oh, I mean, uh, uh, I mentioned one, uh, is that uh, in, in most developed countries, young drivers are not allowed to drink alcohol in Canada until age 22. And I, I think that's a no-brainer. If you look at the results of the study I did with my co-workers, uh, looking at uh, nearly 4,000 injuries over a two-year period, uh, there's one uh, group that stands out, and it's young people. Young people uh, get hurt more than anybody else on our roads. And, and to allow them to have any alcohol on board uh, during this uh, trial period, this two-year period, where they have a special provisional license, uh, I think is folly. Bermuda's decision to make it a record turnout for this week's annual Reinsurance Managers Conference in Denver, Colorado, has paid off handsomely with the government team, led by Premier Craig Cannonier, attracting even more interest than usual, according to observers. Premier Cannonier himself said this was his second trip to RIMS and was turning out to be an eye-opener when he spoke to VSB News, Brian Darby. It's, it's, it's quite an exciting uh, uh, conference once again. Uh, last year being our first opportunity to be at uh, the RIMS conference, and then this year, again, uh, over 10,000 people here. Uh, this has been fantastic to be able to see. Bermuda's uh, stall, uh, uh, again, is, is powering above uh, everyone else, and uh, our bag, which has been the highlight of the RIMS conference, continues to be a game this year. They're bright orange, and uh, we have the opportunity to hand out the first bag today. People have been lining up for these bags. So, uh, once again, this is a great opportunity for Bermuda, Brian. Have you had any chance to meet the press yet? Uh, yes, actually, the RIMS have, uh, uh, they have their own network here. Uh, so we've done an interview there, and we're actually starting to do more interviews uh, this afternoon at 2.30 uh, with several others. Um, so that's in the uh, works. What will be your message, sir, and, and what do they tend to expect to hear? I think there's two things that uh, the reasons why we are here, and that's number one is to support our main industry, knowing that Bermuda is the captive insurance capital of the world and our leaders in the reinsurance. It's important that uh, we show our support to that uh, sector of Bermuda that con um, contributes mainly to our GDP. Uh, and then two, uh, to assist in sharing our problems in the market. Uh, you know, all things being equal as we... As we uh, look around in the competition. We're in the, we're in the global market here. Uh, and whatever we can do as a government to help assist us in being and maintaining that leadership, that's why we're here, to tip the tide towards ourselves. Uh, the market continues to change. New products are being looked at all the time. Uh, and Bermuda has been definitely leaders in this area. And we must maintain that leadership uh, as we compete on the global market. Still ahead on the TV11 News is Che with the weather preview. Thanks, Peter. Hey, let's take a look at the Doppler radar. As you can see, a couple of areas of moisture. Will that mean rain for tonight? I'll have more coming up later. The weather radar picture provided courtesy of the Ministry of Transport on VSB TV 11. You can count on us. 
Save a dollar fifty on XL Fresh Assorted Pork Chops, just three forty nine per pound. Juicy whole seedless watermelons, ten ninety nine each. A dollar eighty nine for a five hundred gram box of Catelli macaroni. Craft barbecue sauce, all varieties, a dollar sixty nine for an eighteen ounce bottle. Save ninety nine cents on a fifty ounce bottle of Era Two X Liquid Laundry Detergent, just four eighty nine. All stores open Monday through Saturday until ten p.m. and Sunday nine a.m. to seven p.m. for your shopping convenience. You can count on us. This portion of the VSB News is brought to you in part by Bermuda Pest Control. For commercial and residential pest control, providing island-wide service. For free inspections and estimates, call 232-PEST. That's 232-7378. The annual end-to-end -end charity event, which is 27 years, has attracted tens of thousands of participants and raised four and a half million in funds for worthy charities, is only a few days away. And Chairman Ann Mello is hoping for another community outpouring of generosity, perseverance and team spirit. We are in our 27th year of offering this amazing event and um, again we realize it's such a community, a broad-based community event and it's going from strength to strength every year so it is truly an icon. And it brings out people that you really you know, wouldn't have thought that they would do that. It's a long walk. <laughs> the end-to-end -end walk is a long walk, 24.1 miles. And so we say that's the fitness challenge. The walk from town, the middle to end, is also a great fitness challenge. So we say to people, we really want you to do those if you're prepared. But if at this point you're not prepared, then consider doing the three-mile walk from Somerset. So you get all the enjoyment and all the fun, but you don't have to put your yourself in a position where you can't finish and or put up some money yes yeah, so money very important go to our website bermuda end to end bm and if you're not going to participate pl uh, push the button that says pledge and you will see all of the members of the bermuda public who are participating this year find somebody you know and pledge some money because our charities our charitable community are doing such a great job helping us in these economic difficulties but they need our support and that support only comes from the broad-based public who give this money and all the money that we get from our participants goes to these charities we need participants we need people who pledge their efforts and we also need spectators so but we also need volunteers that's the other side of this four-legged stool that we need to mention on the day of the event everybody is a volunteer so it's incredible to see the army of people who were out there on that day on Saturday May 3rd Catlin end to end event who were volunteering at water stops and marshalling and helping us with registration and helping us greet the participants at the end and marshal the swimmers and the paddle boarders and across the island now here are the daily markets presented by bias the daily markets presented by Bias. Global stock indexes rose today on solid company earnings while the euro slipped on weaker than expected German inflation data. U.S. stocks advanced as internet stocks rallied for the first time in five days. The S&P 500 advanced 0.48 percent to close at 1,878, while the Nasdaq gained 0.73 percent to close at 4,104 points. 1,786 shares of Bank of Butterfield traded hands today. The stock closed at $2 a share unchanged from yesterday. 10 shares of Keytech and 400 shares of BFNM Limited also traded hands. Keytech was unchanged, while BFNM gained 0.06%. European indices advanced on the day. The FTSE 100 rose 1.04% 1 to 6,770 as preliminary data showed economic growth accelerated in the first quarter. The DAX increased 1.46% 1 to 9,584. Pacific Rim indexes, indices are mixed on the day. The Hang Seng Index rose 1.45% to 22,454. 
The Nikkei 225 dropped 0.98% to 14,288. The Bavespa gained 0.81% on the day, helped by a rally of state-run companies, as investors speculate that a new president would be more successful at improving the economy. U.S. Treasuries were little changed as the Fed is forecast to cut its monthly purchases of Treasuries when its meeting ends tomorrow. Ten-year yields fell one basis point to 2.69%. The pound advanced for a fourth day against the dollar as investors bet on a faster U.K. economic growth. The pound rose to 1.68% as of 4 p.m. London time today, its highest level since November 2009. And that was a look at the daily markets presented by Bias. Save a dollar on Bermuda-grown green leaf lettuce, two forty-nine a bunch. Great on the grill, frozen baby back pork spare ribs, two ninety-nine per pound. Your choice: imported white or brown eggs, two eighty-nine per dozen. Four forty-nine for a thirty-two ounce jar of Libby's mayonnaise. Buy one forty-eight ounce tub of blue bonnet ice cream and get the second one free. Two tubs for only nine thirty-five. Visit our website at www.marketplace.pm for more super specials. Help build a lasting legacy with the Bermuda Hospital's Charitable Trust. Support our hospital by purchasing a 4 by 8 inch brick for the Legacy Walkway. Your engraved brick will be predominantly featured outside the new acute care wing. You can customize your brick with a personal message, a tribute, names of family members, or even a special thank you. Call 295-2428 or visit bhct.bm to make arrangements for your Legacy brick today. Finding great deals in Bermuda has never been easier. Hey, wow, you're looking sharp today. Thanks. With all the money I saved shopping here, I bought myself a new suit and a new car. Phoenix Center's basement carries a wide range of items for household and kitchen. Hang on, where did you park that car? Well, funny you should mention that. Don't tell me, don't tell me. Barbecue grills and accessories, small appliances, bedding sets, camping gear, school supplies, tools, a huge variety of stationery, and so much more. Is it time to knock off yet? Yeah, this price driving me crazy. All from selected vendors and manufacturers who supply only the highest quality merchandise. These are the name companies that you've come to know and trust and return to again and again. And we're always looking to source even more affordable products to offer you, our customers. Come see us today. We're located in the basement of the Phoenix Center on Reed Street. For much more furniture, visit Bermuda's only Ashley Furniture Gallery. Big Saving Zone. You want the best? Forget the rest. For all your furniture needs, shop Big Saving Zone and support your local retailers. Have you ever ordered something online expecting it to be a certain price, but when it arrives it ends up being a whole lot more? Beware of those unexpected hidden fees. That never happens at Big Saving Zone. Open Tuesday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 7 p.m. Big Saving Zone at the end of Stocks Road, St. David's. Season to Taste is next. Season to Taste with Peter Javetti, an exclusive presentation of Lindo's Group of Companies. Hi, I'm Peter Javetti, host of Season to Taste. We're here at the Bermuda Gas Showrooms on Serpentine Road. I have the privilege to have Paul Lawrence, owner of the Hickory Stick, with me. Paul is going to talk about lionfish, a topic dear to his heart. Paul, take it away, my yeah, friend. Yeah, sure. Basically, tonight I'm just going to do a basic dish with the lionfish. What I'd really like to talk about, obviously, is the problem the lionfish is causing. Um, like down in the Caribbean at the moment, some places have lost up to 80% of its local fish and it's starting to happen here. Down deep, about 200 feet, you have absolutely hot spots where there's nothing left but lionfish. Wow. We That's have certain cool. foundations who are really doing um, a lot for it. There's the Ocean Foundation, uh, there's the Lionfish Culling Program which runs out the aquarium and there's the Bermuda Task Force. So why are the fish actually so invasive? What is it about them? That um, basically, they just eat, eat, eat. They have no predators whatsoever in Bermuda. So what happens is they don't have a gag reflex as such, so they eat okay. and eat. You can have them with 18, 20 little baby fish inside of each one. Amazing. They breed very rapidly after a year, whereas most fish are three to five years. And then so what happens there is the eggs lay every three days, and I mean thousands oh, of eggs. Incredible, so it? it's an incredible rate it runs, and of course, incredible rate they're eating. And how do we catch them? Um, basically, at the moment, 
This is what everyone's trying to work out. We'd like to use pots, but obviously government with a fish pot ban, and okay. you've got to be careful. Obviously, the other fish will get into the pots. So spearing? Um, basically, yeah. I mean, I dive a lot, yeah. and you see them, and they're very easy to spear. I'd recommend anyone who is a diver or even a snorkeler who go out okay. is to go to um, one of the programs. You can get your license to spear fish okay. as close as possible, and then um, basically... It's um, go from there and you can know it. It's a lovely fish to eat. It's very, very similar to snapper. You go out now, you're seeing them everywhere, even on top of the reef in the winter time. Basically, what will happen is if nothing's done about them in 10, 20 years, this will be the food fish of Bermuda because... So we don't want that? So nope, there'll be hardly any others left. So start eating these. Yep, okay, start rapidly. Start requesting them, start eating them. Yep, we'd like okay. to get the fishermen involved. And if there's demand for them, they yeah, start. You know. Absolutely. Yep. Absolutely. But so start demanding. Yep. Yes, right. I'm just going to do a basic dish with a bird fondue and it's going to have some capers in it and I've got some grilled asparagus and a roasted red pepper sauce. There we go. So I'll take that aside. Yep. Turn that on again for me if you wouldn't mind. And we squeeze some lemon in that. Basically bird fondue is just a lemon juice and you add cold, cold butter and you've got to keep it moving. That way it stays nice and thick. So it's not like the drawn butter you get with lobster. This will actually coat the fish, and it's really, really nice. Ideal for lobster as well. Just get the butter. So you literally boil the butter, and put it in, keep it moving as easy as anything. The other thing I've done is I've made a red roasted red pepper sauce. You're going to put the cold butter in. It has to be really cold. Otherwise, it'll just melt, and you're just going to get the actual, you know, and you just constantly move it about so it's nice and thick. And just keep it over the flame so it's nice and thick. Just pop some capers in there because I like a little bit of the tartness from the capers right, and the saltiness. A, yep, yep. bit of acidity and salt. Yep. yep, that's always lovely. Capers. And literally, you're just going to coat that over the top. Yep, and I'll just take some of these and just get those capers out of there. Look at that. That is yep. wonderful. That looks so, and so good. have some grilled asparagus. Just prop those up like that on that, around like that, and like I said, the roasted red pepper sauce. Just put it in a squirt bottle. You can do nice circles. The piece de la resistance yeah, is the squirty bottle. Little, Love it. Like that. Excellent. And that's it. This has That's been right. Paul Lawrence from Hickory Stick and Season to Taste. Until next week. Season to Taste with Peter Javetic is an exclusive presentation of Lindo's Group of Companies, featuring Gosling's Wine of the Week. A VSB TV 11 production recorded on location at the Bermuda Gas Showrooms. The Wine of the Week is presented by Gosling's. Welcome to the Gosling's Wine of the Week. I'm here with Simon Carruthers. Simon, Paul has prepared this lovely dish of lionfish, which apparently we have to eat lots and lots of. Yeah. What did you What did you pair with it? Well, I think the only way to enjoy the wine with a beautiful invasive species would be a, a beautiful wine. So we paired this uh, 14 hands hot to trot white blend. Mm -hmm. uh, this is from Washington State, and it's a blend of a little bit of Chardonnay, a little bit of Pinot Gris, and they put a little bit of Semillon in there as well, just yeah. to round it out. Mm -hmm. And that's going to really help to build all those acid acidity flavours to bring it together, and help to balance that lovely sauce that Paul's put in the dish tonight. Excellent. Wow, it's so all, drinkable, isn't and all those flavours are going to really harmonise with that beautiful dish that pours there. Perfect. Until next week. The retail price is $19.25 and is available at Lindo's and Gosling stores. The Wine of the Week was presented by Gosling's. Bermuda Gas is proud to be the authorised distributor of KitchenAid products in Bermuda. Every product that carries the KitchenAid name is guaranteed to be strong, reliable, versatile and backed by 90 years of quality and excellence. KitchenAid believes that preparing meals together is one of life's greatest pleasures, so they craft their products to enhance this experience. No one knows the kitchen like KitchenAid, and no one in Bermuda knows KitchenAid like Bermuda Gas. Bermuda Gas, the clear choice. Visit us at 25 Serpentine Road or online at bermudagas.bm. Bermuda's top male swimmer, Roy Allen Birch, is beginning to hit form overseas while the young Carifta team make a splash in Aruba. National swim coach Ben Smith first speaks on Birch, who has just beaten Olympic athletes. Uh, he just finished uh, the Mesa Grand Prix um, in Arizona, and 
Obviously, it was a it was a top field. Uh, Michael Phelps has just come back, and uh, a lot of the swimmers that Roy's been training with obviously are Olympic medalists. I finished ninth in the competition, uh, which meant that he had to beat some really fast people to get there. So, uh, yeah, he's he's rounding into really good form right now. Um, in a couple of weeks, he'll be doing the Charlotte Grand Prix, uh, hoping to go even faster. All of this is building towards what he's going to do at Commonwealth Games, so we're looking forward to some good stuff. All right. Now, you know I have to talk about Carifta. 22 medals, Ben? Yeah, 22 medals. It was uh, a very impressive showing by uh, a young group of uh, swimmers. 14 was our best going into the meet. Uh, just outstanding swimming. Lots of personal best times. 56 personal best times uh, from the group of 14 swimmers. And obviously the medals, but just fast swims. You know, the, the whole idea going in was that we were looking for personal best swims, and then whatever that meant would be our result. But they were swimming fast in the morning, coming back and swimming faster at night. And the competition was really fast. There were a lot of Carifta records broken. Uh, Bermuda took two of the Carifta records. Uh, Emma Harvey obviously was the was the highlight of the meet. Eight medals, uh, you know that's an outstanding performance. Uh, and Jesse and our, as well. Jesse Washington, and uh, Maddie, Maddie Moore, Moore, Ashley Irby. You know we really put together some some strong swims by some individuals, and then they put it together in that relay team to get the silver medal twice. So uh, impressive swims across the board. Yeah. If and they're all relatively young. And you, you could see so much potential in two or three years' time. Most definitely. Uh, it's, it's great when you can get a group together at the same time. They've been training hard all year. Uh, like you said, you know, a bulk of those medals came in the 11 and 12 age group, and they were swimming times that were putting them in position to perform in the 13, 14 age group, so we can look forward to that. Uh, Maddie Moore's time in the 50 freestyle was absolutely outstanding. I mean, to, to set the national record, breaking a time that was set by Kira Aiken, and putting her at, in this meet, she would have won the 15 to 17 age group as a 13 year old. She still has another year in, in this age group. To do it. Enjoy your new shower. Experience the bold look of Kohler at a Kohler registered showroom. Well, rain, clouds, wind, a little sun. If we'd had some snow, we'd had it all today. I'm Jay Barker, and this is your weather. Let's take a look at our weather shot for today. Today's shot taken by Dennis Whitehead at Dawn Over Pass. This is just an absolutely lovely shot. Love to wake up to this. Looking over the South Shore, a little bit calm, but you can see the beautiful uh, sun rising off in the distance. Great shot. Going to be a tough one to beat. Thanks to Dennis Whitehead for sending that in. Highs and lows for today are high temperature 70 degrees at 2 p.m. Our low at 6 a.m. this morning, 66 degrees. Currently, we're looking at 66 degrees, humidity 60%, winds out of the north-northwest at 15 to 20 knots, and the barometric pressure is rising at 30.1 inches. For April, well, the month's total up to 1.94 inches. That is about 2 inches off what we'd have normally seen for the entire month. Our total for the year, 21.03 inches. Normally, though, we'd have seen 18.4 inches, 41 inches for the year. Take a look at our satellite map. Well, Low pressure to our northeast continues to move away as a ridge of high pressure builds in from the west. Now, this will bring mainly fair conditions into the weekends as winds decrease later night. A frontal boundary will then approach late on Saturday night. It will increase winds to moderate to strong once again. In the gateway cities, there will be possible thunderstorms in 75 in Atlanta, rain in 46 in Boston, Charlotte, thunderstorms in 78, 63 and mostly sunny in London, Miami, mostly sunny in 88 degrees, New York, rain in 53 degrees, 91, 91 in Orlando and partly cloudy, heating right up there, 60 degrees and rain in Philadelphia, Toronto, heavy rain in 48, and Washington, rain and 71 degrees. For tonight, looking at 64, a low temperature of around 64, so it will chill out a little bit, mostly cloudy, one or two showers, winds out of the north-northwest at 18 to 22 knots, but then they will decrease out of the north at 12 to 18 knots. 
for tomorrow. High temperature around 69. Sunny periods. Winds out of the north at 8, 12 to 18 knots. They'll move to the northeast by evening, and then they're going to decrease to 8 to 12 late night. For tonight, Mariners, there is a small craft warning in effect. Seas inside the reef, 2 to 3 feet. Seas outside the reef, 6 to 10 feet. And your sea temperature, 71 degrees. For Mariners tomorrow, there is still a small craft warning in effect. Seas inside the reef, 2 to 4 feet. Rough outside the reef, 6 to 12 feet. High tide will be at 10.01 a.m. And 3.49 p.m. is your low tide. Take a look at the five-day forecast. On Wednesday, sunny periods, high of around 69. Thursday, mix of sun and clouds, high of 70. Partly cloudy on Friday, high of 72. A mix of sun and clouds on Saturday and a high of 72. And on Sunday, sunny breaks and a high of 72. I'd like to thank the Bermuda Weather Service for all their help. And a big shout out to the birthday girl, Kim Govia. Happy birthday, sweetheart. That's it for me. Enjoy your night. I'll see you soon. Thanks for tuning in to the TV11 News. We'll see you again tomorrow night. Good night. Peter Cattell's attire, courtesy of A.S. Cooper & Sons Limited. VSB, TV11, Bermuda.